Tonight on News Center, are you prepared for winter weather? Who's going to win the big game this Sunday? And the men's and women's basketball teams travel to Erie. All this and more next on News Center. Good evening and welcome to CUTV News Center for the week of January 29th, 2015. I'm Zach Prosba. And I'm Santina Murin. We are deeply saddened by the two recent devastating losses our university has faced. Student and basketball player Shanice Clark and distinguished faculty member, department chairperson, and campus leader Dr. Brown will both be truly missed. Donations for Clark's funeral expenses can be made at GoFundMe.com. Funeral arrangements for Dr. Brown will be held at Trinity Church of God in Christ in McKeesport, PA on Sunday, February 1st from 4 to 8 p.m. During President Obama's State of the Union address, the President proposed tuition-free community college. The proposal would cover both half-time and full-time students who maintain a 2.5 GPA and who make steady progress toward completing a program. We had reporter Anthony Diagostino go out and get reactions from the students at Cal U. Last week, in the State of the Union Address, President Obama released a statement saying that he is proposing a plan to make community colleges tuition-free for students. I took to the streets of Cal U to weigh the feelings of the students here on his proposed plan. I, mean, I think it's a great plan. I think that uh, anytime you invest in education, you're investing in the future, um, especially since a lot of people come here for Cal U. I mean, we have a lot of transfer students that came here from community college, and I just think that anytime you're investing in education, you're investing in, in, in uh, a better future for, for this country, and I think that if you're against that, then, I mean, that's not really a good thing. Uh, I think it will be beneficial to students who are serious about going back to school and that it will benefit the nation as a whole. Um, but I believe that if students are going to go back to community college for free, that they should definitely have to have requirements to maintain, like a minimum GPA and such, uh, an attendance policy and such. It seems like some students at Cal U approve of President Obama's plan to make community colleges tuition free. Only time will tell if Congress will agree with the president as well. For CUTV News Center, I'm Anthony Diagostino. To raise awareness of the average 22 military veterans that commit suicide each day, the Veterans Club of Cal U and the ROTC are partnering up to sponsor a 22 push-up initiative to raise awareness. Each day from now until February 20th at 11.22 a.m. in the quad outside Heron Hall, a group of veterans, students, and general public will gather each day to do 22 push-ups and help those in need. Each time a participant completes the 22 push-ups, they will be entered into a prize drawing with the winner announced at the end of the 22-day event. Harold Standard from Uniontown, PA will be coming to campus Friday, February 6th to host open interviews for a multimedia advertising sales executive position. To be considered, you must schedule an interview time by Wednesday, February 4th. You can do so at volunteersignup.org slash 4KWKK. You must also forward your resume to recruit at cau.edu. They are looking for senior students and alumni with majors in business, journalism, marketing, communication, liberal arts, and graphics and multimedia. Well, here we go again. Flocks of crows have begun congregating on campus, and once again, Cal U is taking measures to keep them off of buildings and in the quad. Technicians began using a natural plant-based mist in an attempt to disperse the flocks of crows. They have been a Cal U issue since 2010, since once crows have identified a place to go in the winter, they typically return each year. The USDA approved dispersal measures have been pretty effective in relocating the flocks. The infamous Doomsday Clock run by a group of atomic scientists has moved to three minutes to midnight, with midnight signifying the end of the world. The three minutes symbolized the closest the world has been to doomsday since 1953 when it was two minutes from midnight. This is also the closest the clock has been to midnight since the beginning of the Cold War in 1984. The doomsday clock has been released a couple times in recent years, with the latest coming in 2012 where the clock stood at five minutes to midnight. The move from 2012 is attributed to emerging technologies, climate changes, and nuclear weapons. It's that time of year again when students bundle up and drivers need to heed caution because of the winter weather striking the community. 
For more on how to stay safe during the season, CUTV's Ryan Kaufman has more. Has once again hit the Cal U campus and we are here at the Cal U Police Department to find out some tips and precautions that students and faculty can take to keep their wallet from taking a hit this winter. Uh, first of all, let's start with the vehicle. Um, if you're going to be driving this winter, uh, you should check your vehicle out. Uh, make sure you have a good set of healthy tires, good tread, um, inflated to the proper um, capacity. Check your battery, make sure you have a good strong battery in your uh, car because the winter conditions sitting out in sub-zero will kill that battery a lot quicker and then you're going to have issues. Besides being safe from winter weather, drivers should also be aware of new legislation recently passed. They should clear off the entire car. I mean, there's recent legislation out there. If chunks of ice come off your roof and go back and hit the vehicle behind you, you're responsible for that. You can be cited for that. Uh, so you should be cleaning that off. Um, your license plate should be legible to someone, a police officer. Make sure your tail lights, your headlights are, you know, free of debris. Uh, so people can see you and you can see where you're going. Driving tips aren't the only thing Chief McSheffrey wants students to know about. He also has tips on how to stay safe when you aren't behind the wheel. Well, even like for the students here, uh, once, once things get bad, uh, cold, ice, you know, dress appropriately. Wear loose, loose layers if you're going to be walking around outside from class to class. Uh, pay attention where you're walking. Wear a good tread on your shoes so you don't slip on the sidewalks. Um, and as I always say, walk with a friend um, just for safety purposes, for safety in numbers. Here's to you taking some of these tips and applying them to your life to keep you and your wallet safe this winter. I'm Ryan Kaufman for CUTV News Center. This week in the Cal Times, be sure to check out a review of the State of the Union Address, a story on the upcoming open mic nights at Sycamore Bistro, and a feature on Cal's tribute game last Saturday for Shanice Clark. And since, you know, we talked a little bit previously about the doomsday clock, it's kind of scary knowing we're that close to what they call the end of the world being only three minutes away, but a lot of things have happened in recent years. I, I can see why we're there. I don't know. We've survived the end of the world once. I feel like we could do it again. Yeah, 2012 and Y2K also. So hopefully a third time's not the charm for that. <laughs> when we come back, Haley Ataro has your entertainment report. Stay tuned. The Multimedia Access Center is an open lab where California University students can work on an assignment, attend a workshop, print a document for class, or take advantage of a variety of services such as large format printing, web development, and graphic design. Located in the renovated Natalie Student Center across from the Student Bookstore, the Mac Lab is also your home for OrgSync support and services. For hours of operation or for more information, stop by the Mac Lab, visit our website, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. Save three, set one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. Stay connected with CU TV. Subscribe to us on YouTube for new videos. Follow us on Twitter for status updates. Like us on Facebook for updates, videos, and more. CU TV social media. Get connected, stay connected. So, April, Yeah. you know your charger's still using energy when it's plugged into the wall, right? Yeah, but uh, that's not my charger. I don't even have a cell phone. Millions of kids are using their energy wisely. What's your excuse? Welcome back to CUTV News Center. Here's the upcoming five day forecast. You see right there on Friday, a little bit above freezing, but the low of seven at night, which is gonna set us up 
for late in the weekend, starting early next week for some snow starting to fall on Sunday and Monday. And, you know, Santina right there, that zero on Monday, not looking very pretty. And I know about weather chaos. Today is the one year anniversary of where I'm from, Atlanta, and their snow apocalypse, and all chaos broke loose from that. So hopefully the snow that we get this weekend is nowhere near as bad. Right. I just hate the cold. I hate the snow. I hate the ice. You can't drive anywhere. It makes things tough. I don't like it. Yeah, it's definitely been an adjustment coming back up here, back from the south where there's no snow at all, except for once a year. So when we come back, Haley Ataro has your entertainment report. Stay tuned. One decision, endless possibilities. California University of Pennsylvania opens your mind to more than 130 programs of study, programs that matter, to education, to healthcare, to technology, to the future of our world. California University of Pennsylvania, because the world is waiting for you. Visit or apply online, calu.edu. For almost 30 years, CUTV has been the campus and community home for local news, sports, and entertainment. Broadcast in 100,000 homes in southwestern Pennsylvania, CUTV provides complete coverage of Vulcan sports as well as high school football coverage. Broadcast weekly live, CUTV News Center provides coverage of local and campus events, weekend weather, sports highlights, and feature stories. For more information on CUTV, check us out on the web, friend us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. CUTV has your Vulcan basketball coverage all season long. Watch as the Vulcans look to make a run through the PSAC West into the playoffs. Vulcan basketball, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Sundays, only on CUTV. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Haley Attar with your entertainment report. This week, we have a new segment about the weird and bizarre things you can find online. Our reporter, Mac Mays, will be your guide through the internet. Hi, my name is Mike Mays. My friends consider me an expert on finding strange and a little weird things online. So here are three things I found online this week. First, we have Christopher Peters from Columbus, Ohio, who police are calling the Braveheart Bandit because of his tattoo that resembles Mel Gibson's character. Peter is being accused of stealing more than $300 in clothes from Old Navy in a Dyson vacuum. Next, we have David Nichols from Rice University who ordered and turned his dorm room into a giant ball pen. U.S. Customs decided to investigate the contents of David's order due to the strangeness and the size of the order. And finally, you can now purchase your very own emoji mask. Emojimask.com offers five different emojis which you can buy for a cost of $5.99, or you can pay $15 and get all five. So there you have it, my three things I found online for this week. If you guys find anything, let us know. For CUTV News Center, I'm Mike Mays. This week in pop culture, Renona Ryder announced earlier this week that a Beetlejuice 2 is in the making. The star of the 1988 classic movie confirmed to the Huffington Post that the production of the sequel has started. Tim Burton has yet to confirm a release date for his highly anticipated film. Next, Teen Mom star Farrah Abraham appeared on the show The Doctors on Monday to discuss her recent plastic surgery incident. Farrah had an allergic reaction to the implants she was receiving, which caused her lip to swell all the way up to her nose. This is just one of the many procedures Farrah has had since her appearance on the show. As for more plastic surgery, the star says she's still open to the possibility of butt implants in the future. Victoria's Secret made quite the announcement Tuesday to its fans and shoppers after revealing there is yet another fashion show in the making. Victoria's Secret is known for its legendary fashion show that airs in December every year. But now they have added yet another show dedicated to just swimwear. The first ever Victoria's Secret swim special will air on Thursday, February 26th on CBS with some special musical guests. 
Snapchat's new update caused quite the uproar for its users on Tuesday. The update to the app included many new features like a search bar to find new users and to explore a feature that allows one to add another by simply snapping a picture of their username. But the biggest and most controversial change was the fact that you can now no longer view one another's top friends. People with trust issues are not happy about the change as they can no longer view who their significant other is sending pictures to the most. And finally, anticipation grows for the 2015 Oscars due to Neil Patrick Harris's Twitter account. The host of this year's Oscars tweeted that the creative team from Disney's Frozen has hopped on board to assist in producing this year's show. The 2015 Oscars will be live on February 22nd on ABC. This week on the Cal calendar, this Sunday, February 1st, BSU invites you to come out and audition for their annual talent show. Auditions will be held in the Carter Multipurpose Room from 3 to 6 p.m. The actual show itself will be on February 11th in Steel Hall. Next Tuesday, February 3rd, the Central Blood Bank will be on campus and looking for donors. There will be a setup in the Carter Hall Multipurpose Room from 11 a.m. until 3.30 p.m. You can receive one hour of service from donating blood. Next Thursday from 9 p.m. until midnight will be Cali's annual non-alcoholic mix-off hosted in the Convocation Center. Students are encouraged to come out and enjoy some delicious beverages and good music as Greek Life collaborates with the Underground Cafe. And this week playing in the Vulcan Theater is Fury starring Brad Pitt and Logan Lerman. In April 1945, as allies make their final push in the European theater, a battle-hardened army sergeant named War Daddy commands a Sherman tank and his five-man crew on a deadly mission behind enemy lines. Outnumbered, outgunned, and with a rookie soldier thrust into their platoon, War Daddy and his men face overwhelming odds in their heroic attempts to strive at the heart of the Nazi Germany. Showtimes are 4, 8, and 11 on select dates. So you guys, this update to Snapchat caused quite the uproar. It was like all on my news feeds. Everyone was <laughs> complaining about it. What do you guys think? Well, I didn't even think about the whole significant other side of yeah. things. Now that you've said that, you know, it actually makes sense. But the one thing I didn't actually like was the new Discover thing. When you have a bunch of companies have different Snapchat companies. I know ESPN, I actually looked at it. I'm like, I can just find this on a website. Why do I need to have this on my Snapchat? It, right. It's really kind of screwed things over, in my opinion, on the app. I just think it's ridiculous how much people care about something like that. I yeah. mean, if you really don't have that much trust in your significant other that if you can't see their top friends, right. then you probably shouldn't be with them anyway. Yeah. So I just think it's ridiculous. I think two out of the three of the updates were kind of cool. I don't know about the top friends. I like to know who's in my top friends and, you know, yeah. I just like to know. Just more drama, I guess. Yeah, more drama. <laughs> Thanks, Haley. When we return, Matt Hagee has your sports report. Stay tuned. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. For almost 30 years, CUTV has been the campus and community home for local news, sports, and entertainment. Broadcast in 100,000 homes in southwestern Pennsylvania, CUTV provides complete coverage of Vulcan sports as well as high school football coverage. Broadcast weekly live, CUTV News Center provides coverage of local and campus events, weekend weather, sports highlights, and feature stories. For more information on CUTV, check us out on the web, friend us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. CUTV News Center brings you the best in local news, weather, entertainment, and sports. A new building is being constructed and it is estimated. We take a look at our local temperatures for this morning, right around Dubois, we have 38 degrees. Swimmer Diana Nyad and former pro hockey player Sean Avery. With the PSAC preseason poll. CUTV News Center. Thursdays at 5. Stay connected with CU TV. Subscribe to us on YouTube for new videos. Follow us on Twitter for status updates. Like us on Facebook for updates, videos, and more. CU TV.
TV social media. Get connected, stay connected. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Matt Hagee with your sports report. The Vulcan basketball teams took a trip up Interstate 79 to Erie for the second straight week, this time to face off against the Mercyhurst Lakers. For the women, they looked to keep pace with the PSAC West leaders, but were right facing a Lakers team that were, came into the contest winners of five of their last six games. You see head coach Jess Strom and her he troops right there getting ready to go. To Glenn Mickey Glenn, Glenn trying to get a three-pointer. No Caitlin Frotz gets the Vulcans on the board good. first right there. Something tells me we're going to see a lot of Caitlin Frotz in these highlights. And then even on the turnovers here, Mercy is turning the ball over Caitlin Frotz all alone. And when you get her all alone, she will go to the basketball all the time and get the basket. Cal out to a big lead. But Natalie Piagesi for Mercy has got off to a really fast start in this game. The sophomore got 10 first half points. But at California, watch this passer. Sierra Barrett through Adrian Clocker's legs to Mickey Glenn. She puts it in. California out night to a big lead. Now Irina Kuko even gets in the scoring, just throwing the basketball up and getting it in. Cal got out to a lead as much as 18 in the first half. And Caitlin Frotz here. Hey, when it's your night, it's your night. She just threw up a prayer and it went in the basket. But Mercer's wasn't done yet. They get a big basket here from Katie Fisher, a three-pointer near the end of the half to kind of close in on the Cal lead, but Cal had nothing to do with that. Emma Mahati, you see right here, she's got Caitlin Frotz with her, but instead of that, she's going to hit the circle button on the PlayStation controller, and she's going to put the basket in. California is just rolling along, and Caitlin Frotz again on the breakaway. Good night, Lakers, with that basket. California just going ahead here, and even Sierra Barrett, the reigning, the four-time reigning freshman of the week, gets it another big second half, just impressive performance, and they indeed grab an impressive 72-46 victory on the road against Mercyhurst to improve the 16-3 overall and 13-2 in the conference. Frotz led the way for the Vulcans as she established a new season high in scoring with 25 points. Emma Mahati continued her impressive senior campaign with 13 points, three rebounds, and three steals. Sierra Barrett, as mentioned before, made a case to win her fifth straight PSAC West Freshman of the Week honors with 11 second half points and eight rebounds. The Vulcans return home to the Convocation Center this Saturday as they will take on the red hot Edinburgh Fighting Scots. Tip off is set for three o'clock. And then now moving to the nightcap at the MAC last night. This California men's team, you can see Bill Brown and his troops getting ready to take on a Mercyhurst team that's had their number recently. And California, once again, just like in the women's game, they got on the board first. Drew Cook with a great steal, falling down, puts the basket in, and gets Cal out to the first lead. But Terrence Ingram for the Lakers fires right back in the next possession. Big three ball to take the lead at by one. Now Khalil Jabby, he had a shot right there. That was as the shot clock expired, much like Terrence Ingram's shot. And here's Callan Daly with the steal and a one-hand slam. And it got the crowd fired up in Mercyhurst. They started to pull away a little bit. And again, here's more Mercyhurst. Damon Jones, the team's leading scorer. Nice little windmill move, nifty move. It looked like the game was over, but California came back. Here's Drew Cook getting the members bounce on the rim and one opportunity. He would sink the next free throw. And here's Calvin Brown. The game was tied, and Calvin Brown gives Cal their first lead since they were up 4-3 to three early in the first half. And Drew Cook. Clutch three-pointer to tie the game at 53 with just over a minute to go. But Gino Nana, the notorious Vulcan killer, drains a long three to give Mercyhurst the lead. But watch this. This last minute, things got crazy. James Ewing misses a free throw that would have made a two-point game. Now, Cal has an opportunity to take the, to take the lead at the last second here. Kyle Little Jabby can't get the rebound to go. It goes out of bounds off of Mercyhurst. One last shot with one second left. Jabby. Richard Smith just misses the alley-oop dunk that would have gave the Vulcans a walk-off win on the road. And this heartbreaking defeat, Cal drops to 12-8 overall, 8-7 in the conference, and now has lost five straight contests to the Lakers dating back to December 2013. For Cal, Khalil Jabby led all Cal scorers with 13 points while adding five rebounds. Calvin Brown had his best game as a Vulcan so far as he tallied 11 points and fell just short of a double-double and added three blocks and three steals. 
Richard Smith also fell a rebound short of a double-double as he added 10 points along with 9 rebounds and 2 blocks. Cal next faces the team that is breathing down their neck in the PSAC West standings, the Edinburgh Fighting Scots at the Convocation Center at 5 o'clock on Saturday. 190 Cal U student athletes representing all sports on campus were named to the Fall 2014 Academic Honor Roll. This is the 10th consecutive semester that Cal's athletic teams have compiled a GPA of 3.10 or higher. 24 of the student athletes earned a perfect 4.0 GPA. Overall, the Vulcan athletes posted a cumulative GPA of 3.138 in the fall. The Cal U cross country teams has raised over $700 during their annual Sponsor My Week fundraising drive for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Against Slippery Rock last fall, the teams raced in homemade pink shirts to bring awareness to the cause. With the Super Bowl approaching Sunday, everyone around the country is making predictions for who is going to win the big game. This week I went around the campus asking Cal U faculty and students their predictions. The big question on everyone's mind this weekend is who's going to win the Super Bowl, Seahawks or Patriots? The Cal U community weighed in. Uh, I think the Seahawks are going to take it. I think Seattle's going to win. Seattle Seahawks. 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 Seahawks for sure. Seattle. The Seahawks. I got Seahawks, baby. Legion of Boom. Patriots. Okay. It's the first one. So there you have it. The select Cal community picked the Seahawks 9-1. to one. If you'd like to tell us who you think is going to win the Super Bowl, tweet us at CUTV underscore PA and use the hashtag CUTV SP picks. As you saw what the Cal community thinks, the majority is going with the Seahawks. Now my question to you is, who do you think is going to win the big game? Okay, so unfortunately, I have to be honest with you guys, I kind of fit under the stereotypical girls know nothing about sports, especially football. I really didn't even know who was in the Super Bowl until about five seconds ago. So uh, I'm just going to probably watch it for the commercials, you know, those are usually good. Something wrong with that. <laughs> and, uh, Matt, I'm going to actually stick with the majority of the students. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I think they're bound to go back to back. I think the Patriots, though, they have a better chance than the Broncos did last year because they have the better defense with Revis and Brandon Browner, another cornerback who actually was a Seahawk last season. That's right. And the Patriots' defense, one of their more uh, better uh, things they changed over the course of the season from last year, defense couldn't stop anyone. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, I got the Seahawks 21 17. All right. Thanks, Matt. And finally, with this Sunday Super Bowl, marketers spend millions of dollars and many months gearing up for their annual Super Bowl commercials. Chicago native Scott Zabielski could crash the February 1st game with an ad produced for $2,000 and in fewer than two weeks. Zabielski, whose day job is producer of Tosh.0 on Comedy Central, is one of 10 finalists vying for a $1 million prize and a spot during the Super Bowl for Doritos. Take a look. Welcome aboard, folks. Just go ahead and take any empty seat that you see. Oh, I hope it's not contagious. So I do have it. When your mom wakes up, can you tell her about me? <laughs> well, that was very funny. I always like watching the Doritos commercials, but the greatest Super Bowl commercial to me all time is still Coca-Cola Mean Joe Green. Nothing I don't think is ever going to beat that, but I always like a good laugh. I don't know. I like Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will do it for this week's edition of New Center. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel at CUTV New Center. Thanks for watching and have a great week. I didn't want to all time with. Like